Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. July book poll results. Are you ready? So, voting was closer than it ever was. We were just shy of 100 votes for the poll which is the highest it's ever been. I hope to see more of you on Discord. And I know we're all busy. Even if you don't, you know, have time to type a comment, if you just, you know, want, want to see what somebody else thinks, feel free to pop into Discord. I promise we're all friendly. And there were four choices this month. And all of the choices that were possible for the poll that didn't make it, is coming out in a separate video. I believe I have it scheduled for this Wednesday or Thursday. So be on the lookout for that. And without further ado, let's talk about those books. First up is The Christmas Cowboy by Shannon Hatfield. Shannon Hatfield. This was inspired over at this was inspired by Jeanette over at Jane Reads. Shannon Hatfield is one of her favorite authors. I haven't read anything by her. And it was a Western romance. So why not? It is the first book in the Rodeo Romance series. And I will read you the description from Goodreads. And I'm using my husband's phone for descriptors tonight, if I don't have a copy of it. Flying from city to city in her job as a busy corporate trainer for a successful direct sales company, Kenzie Beckett doesn't have time for a man. And most certainly not for the handsome cowboy she keeps running into at the airport. Burned twice, she doesn't trust anyone wearing boots and wranglers, especially someone as charming and handsome as Tate Morgan. Among the top saddle bronc riders in the rodeo circuit, easygoing Tate Morgan can handle the toughest horse out there. But trying to handle the beautiful Kenzie Beckett is a completely different story. As the holiday season approaches, this Christmas cowboy is going to need more than a little mistletoe to win her heart. I just think this sounds charming. It's, you know, 300 and... 28 pages. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. I want to try Shannon Hatfield, and this seems like a great way to do it. So I'm very much looking forward to this one, and I trust Jeanette's choices. So I am looking forward to this one. Next up. Next up, A Soul, a soul is Cold as Frost by Jennifer Kropf. This is the first book in the Winter Souls series. Fireball, no. Go lay down. And I will read you the description on Goodreads. This is young adult um, Christian fantasy Narnia inspired. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. The quarrel of sword and bone was a death sentence for anyone who stepped into the arena with the deranged queen, whose soul had crisped to frost in an age long since past. 16-year-old Helen Bell understood tragedy better than most kids growing up. She knew what it was like to wear clothes from donation bins and be mocked by the beautiful girls in high school. She thought those brutal, brutal experiences made her ready for anything. But she wasn't ready for this. After, after an eccentric girl opens Helen's eyes to let her see the realm of winter, a world with intersex tucked carefully into the cracks of our own, where monarchs have risen and fallen, it's forbidden to mention the name of the dead king, and the currency is gold rings. Helen discovers things are far from ordinary in winter. After trying to deny the existence of dis a disrupting train horn ringing in her ears for days, Helen receives a mysterious summons from a group who call themselves the Crimson Court 
to enter into the quarrel of sword and bone. A traditional duel performed before 1,000 witnesses that leaves only one survivor. And she's forced to finally pay attention to the handsome boy who's been following her around with a warning on his tongue. When the arrival of the wicked villains propels Helen into the heart of winter, where there's no going back, she finds herself being pursued by something else too. A whispered prayer battling on her behalf and an ancient truth that breathes living words of wisdom. The very wisdom forgotten by the rim folk when their disunity drove them to draw lines in the snow in, in ages past. Helen must find a way out or she'll be dragged into the arena to face the crooked queen head on before a crowd ready to watch her die. I just think this sounds very interesting and it's also, I'm going to read you the last paragraph of the description. It'll explain it better. The Winter Soul series blends action and warm Christmas traditions, bringing the old forgotten tales of the season to life with new and grittier versions of famous characters out of old holiday legends, folklore, and myths, such as St. Nicholas, the Snow Queen, the Scrooge, and the Nutcracker. I think it sounds fascinating. It is 405 pages. It's young adult Christian fantasy. It is available in paperback format. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. So on to the next choice. Next up is The Ice One by Janelle Cizelinski. This was a birthday haul for me last year. And it is the only one of the three books I currently own. And I will read you the back. Amid the violent last days of the glittering Russian monarchy, a princess on the run finds her heart where she least expects it. 1917 Petrograd. Fleeing the murderous flames of the Russian Revolution, Princess Svetlana Dotsky hopes to find safety in Paris with her mother and sister. But the city is buckling under the weight of the Great War, and the Bolsheviks will not rest until they have erased every Russian aristocrat from memory. Svetlana and her family are forced into hiding in Paris's underbelly, with little to their name but the jewelry that they sewed into their corsets before their terrifying escape. Though Wynn McCallan was born the second son of a Scottish duke, the only title he cares for is that of surgeon. Putting his talents with a scalpel to good use in the hospitals in Paris, Wynn pushes the boundaries of medical science to give his patients the best possible care or the best care possible. After treating Svetlana for a minor injury, he is pulled into a world of decaying imperial glitter. Intrigued by this mysterious, cold, and beautiful woman, Wynn follows Svetlana to an underground Russian club where drink, dance, and questionable dealings spill over like splashes of vodka. Out of money and options, Svetlana agrees to a marriage of convenience with a handsome and brilliant Wynn who will protect her and pay off her family's debts. It is the right thing for a good man to do, but Wynne cannot help but hope the marriage will turn into one of true affection. When Wynne's life takes an unexpected turn, so does Svetlana's, and soon Paris becomes as dangerous as Petrograd. And as the Bolsheviks chase them to Scotland and beyond, Wynne and Svetlana begin to wonder if they will ever be able to outrun the love they are beginning to feel for one another. It's my first book by the author. I am looking forward to it immensely. It is 386 pages. And I just, I think this cover is stunning. I just, it's stunning. All right, that leaves us our last book. All right, The Christmas Dress by Courtney Cole. I will read you the description. An enchanted Christmas dress brings two generations of women together for the magic of the season in this delightful holiday story. One dress, two women, the magic of the holiday season. When hopeful fashionista Meg Juilliard must return to her hometown of Chicago to manage her late father's apartment building, 
she thinks her dreams of making it in the fashion business are over. Add in her father's electric roster of tenants who all need Meg's attention ASAP, a host of building-related disasters, and a handsome handyman she keeps embarrassing, embarrassing herself in front of. And this has all the makings for the worst Christmas she's ever had. Ellie Wade, one of the building's longtime residents, is also not feeling the Christmas joy this year. She is preparing to move into a nursing home, reluctantly, and is in the process of sorting through her belongings to downsize. Every corner of her apartment holds memories, some good, some bad, but there's one dress she hesitates to pack up as it represents both the best and worst night of her life. Ellie and Meg strike up an unlikely friendship, and the story of Ellie's dress comes out. Ellie gifts the gorgeous dress to Meg, hoping that it will bring her more luck, on the condition that she wear it to the building's Christmas party. The dress magically fits, and while it eventually leads to the best night of Meg's life, it also acts as inspiration for Meg to follow a lifelong dream of her own. A dream that will help save the crumbling Parkview West and restore it to its former glory and keep it as a safe home for all of the current tenants. The dress and the magic of the holiday season helps both Meg and Ellie find their own happy endings. I just think this sounds amazing. I love the cover of this one as well. And this one is 352 pages. So those were the four choices. And I, I'm still blown away how close the spread was between first and second place here. So the winner this month was the ice one. I will prep Discord next week. Um, and I hope that I think it's probably a new author for a lot of us. It sounds like a fascinating story. It sounds chilly. It sounds interesting. So Let's dive into 1917 Paris and Scotland and discover what's going on. Leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.